Okay, very good morning to everyone. Hope you're well. Good to be back, having had a, a week off the desk. So both Sam and I are uh, back on the briefing this morning uh, and good to be here. So it's 30th of September, uh, last trading day of the month, which obviously brings about um, usually some interesting market movement potentially, uh, as it's also marking quarter end as well. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about repercussion that could have uh, also on the repo market, which is likely to be back in the headlines uh, later when the US session gets underway. Uh, but usual routine, going to look predominantly at not just today's session and some of the overnight and weekend press coverage, but also what's on the agenda for the week ahead to give you a bit of a sense for how the how the landscape looks like over the next five trading days. Particularly interesting, of course, because um, as I've been away uh, and having been in America, obviously I'm aware, having seen a lot of the news out there about this push for impeachment of Donald Trump uh, to do with um, the collusion talks and, and so on that's been happening uh, with Joe Biden as well and how all of this is playing up, of course, as we go into the 2020 run. So you're going to be expecting lots more of this type of political shenanigans, both sides of the, the Atlantic this week. Because obviously the other thing over the weekend, of course, was more um, mudslinging at Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, this time about squeezing not just one lady's thighs, but two at the same time, uh, in a Trump-esque fashion almost. Um, him also saying that he wouldn't resign after he said he'd rather die in the ditch just a few weeks ago. So lots of political movement at the moment, of course, happening um, on, as I said, both sides of the pond, so we can have a look at that. And this comes at an interesting time for UK economic data. We get the PMI sequence, so manufacturing, of course, from the UK will be interesting to see whether or not we have any type of degree of uh, renewed front loading ahead of what is um, the deadline as it stands, at least at the moment, irrespective of UK legislative law change on October 31st because of what some of the things that Johnson's been threatening. Uh, whether that materialises or not, definitely not expecting that to be to the same tune as what we saw at the beginning of the year um, when we saw a large Q1 activity ahead of the initial March deadline. Given now the oversupply or the infantry situation of most firms, I'd say any read, read through into that recurring again is probably limited. Um, and of course the service sector number uh, we'll be looking at on Thursday alongside the European numbers uh, as well, which is obviously going to be interesting. Uh, and then the party conference, of course, the Conservatives uh, started yesterday. That's going to be going on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, which will finish, of course, with the Prime Minister giving the kind of closing speech. But I guess you can expect further almost polarisation of UK politics with the usual hard language being used, of which Boris has been criticised over the last week or so uh, of having... Uh, continued down that route uh, but that's kind of his main and particularly with Dominic Cummings of course advising him the main route as he continues to gear up for this almost inevitable general election uh, whenever that might be in the coming weeks and months so that's the kind of overall gist of things um, I'm going to leave my look at the charts uh, very brief because Sam can do that all these charts removed of any technical analysis so I'll let him go with that in more detail as far as sentiment is concerned for the market open uh, relatively muted there was a little bit of a gap open um, in the overnight session perhaps a little bit of relief as Trump officials played down reports of China investment uh, limits which were some of the headlines that were hitting in a negative sense for the trade talks at the end of last week um, however uh, that hasn't really lasted too long, as we know there's probably going to be lots more twists in the uh, in the storyline for the trade talks as we go through the week. And so any gains that were seen have been relatively limited. Uh, US stock futures marginally positive. Um, the European side a little bit negative in that sense. Uh, the DAX future here, centre left, coming back down towards pivot to pretty much close the gap um, back toward uh, Friday's close in UX trading. Uh, not forgetting as well, there is a German holiday happening this week as well for Unification Day uh, uh, later on in the week. Uh, otherwise, elsewhere, WTI crude a little bit lower, perhaps some conciliatory tones being heard from Saudi Arabia at the weekend, an interview with Mohammed bin Salman basically suggesting that uh, they do not want military confrontation with Iran. 
Uh, so oil's just backing off a little bit uh, for having found some resistance overnight. The pivot level and the futures down 20 cents. Gold uh, kind of hugging the $1,500 level at the moment. Did see a momentary break lower as Europe came in as we broke through the Asia Pacific low level. However, we have recovered that since uh, trading down about $7 at the moment. So going back to the calendar, um, as I said, Sam will go over the charts in a moment. And so looking uh, through some of the highlights here, you can see Monday kicking things off Chinese manufacturing data. Now, what did that look like overnight? Well, China's factory outlook sector improved in September, an uptick in new orders and infrastructure spending, uh, but with data still showing factories are contracting. So it's almost kind of one of those things where uh, this PMI reading, obviously the 50 level, the sweet spot for manufacturing, whether in contraction or expansion territory, and still in, still in contraction, but services slowed slightly, but still expanding. Um, more positively, though, if you start looking at these on a on a graphic where you can see the manufacturing is the white line, non-manufacturing the blue line, obviously the outline much firmer. New export orders is the purple line and the orange line is new orders. And so you can see here, importantly, a little bit of a bottoming out of sorts. And uh, again, this hence the reason why Bloomberg leading with the headline about a positive outlook, having got over that trough that we saw uh, as the, the trade wars continue to be the main significant weighing factor on the local economy there. Uh, going back then, the other things are we've got this afternoon the US Chicago PMI. That obviously will be key. If you actually look at the US data set throughout this week, you've got Chicago PMI today, you've got ISM manufacturing on Tuesday, you've got US ADP on Wednesday, factory orders and ISM non manufacturing Thursday. And all of this obviously culminating in non-farm payrolls on Friday. So very interesting week, of course, for U.S. data. The activity data in particular is one which we've been watching quite closely because that has been the weaker kind of side of things as far as U.S. economy is concerned relative to how the consumer uh, has been performing. Uh, and then obviously the jobs data has been declining over the last couple of months. And I think when I looked last night, the, the numbers expected around 145 for the headline change in on-farm payrolls. And, and subsequently, why the Fed have been in this mid-cycle adjustment, having executed now two rate hikes off that initial peak that we had. So, yeah, going to be a, an interesting week for that, overlaid, of course, by uh, further focus on the U.S. political side and uh, the pressure that Trump's been under uh, and so on with the latest move for impeachment, of which I must say... Um, I was quite surprised. I mean, I wasn't looking at markets too intently last week, obviously having been away, but um, I understand that the market did react quite negatively, in, at least in the short term, to when that news came out. But I'm still absolutely confident that there's no way Trump will get impeached. I don't know why people get so fanatical about this idea of a Trump impeachment. Um, the fact that it's come now, I think, timing-wise, is completely not surprising at all. And I'd expect more things like this to materialize as we go through the next 12, 18 months as we go into that uh, 2020 election. But the fact that you would have to have quite a large amount, I think it's 20 Republicans basically cross the floor and vote um, with the Democrats in order to get him impeached, it's just not going to happen. So I don't know why people get so, uh, so surprised by it in that sense. If anything, it's just a better opportunity to get in a lower pullback uh, at least in a medium term perspective. Um, the one thing actually I think that it, it, I actually think an impeachment of Donald Trump in the way that it's come about at the moment, I think actually is a positive for Trump. If you actually look at the opinion polls, Trump is as popular as ever since he came in as US president. Um, and if anything, I think this regalvanizes his base by criticizing Trump, it gives him more firepower to just talk ever more kind of explicitly about the usual things that he does. So I actually think it's almost counterintuitive with the Democrats going down this route, but that's just my view. Um, moving on to the headlines then, and we'll, we can circle back onto the calendar at the end. Some of the other things then I've mentioned already is this Trump officials playing down uh, these reports which circulate at the end of last week, which obviously put a bit of a negative finish to things. Now, just to recap, 
We heard last Friday Bloomberg sources, I think it was citing Kudlow, as saying that options discussed have included forcing a delisting of Chinese companies from US exchanges, imposing limits on investments in Chinese markets by US government pension funds, and putting caps on the value of Chinese companies included in indexes managed by US firms. So again, it's like another dimension, if you like, or evolution of the trade talks. And what's happened is uh, the usual way of which these trade talk stories tend to develop. You get the initial source comments, which well, damages market sentiment short term, but then it gets managed effectively by the administration to ensure that any fallout is limited. And so it's almost been unwound to a certain degree. And this all, of course, coming ahead of quite key top level talks over the coming weeks between the two nations. Uh, so the Treasury denied that China delisting plans at this time at least. But of course, as always, you know, no smoke without fire. I firmly believe that the administration would have drip fed this in just to let the Chinese know what they're thinking as kind of wagging the stick for the trade talks that, of course, are, are ongoing. Uh, separately, on the, on the U.S. side, uh, Reuters exclusive at the weekend was suggesting that the Nasdaq are cracking down on initial public offerings of small Chinese companies by tightening restrictions and slowing down their approval, according to regulatory filings, corporate executives, investment bankers. So again, uh, further other ways of which are just looking to put the pressure on the talks which are coming up in the, in the coming weeks. Um, Trump... Um, to intensify on the impeachment inquiry, Trump remaining defiant. So we've already discussed this, so we'll move on from that point. This was one of the other things to be aware of specifically for today. Uh, I would say this has kind of dropped off the, the priority list, if you like, of potential um, short-term catalysts that could cause negative uh, almost sentiment uh, and volatility increase for intraday markets. That's because the, uh, the way of which the Federal Reserve Bank of New York have gone about dealing with this liquidity squeeze in the money markets in America over the last kind of three to four weeks by just basically injecting large amounts of liquidity through short term overnight kind of lending facilities or open market operations. Um, but one thing to be aware of is the two five and seven year treasuries that were auctioned uh, last week by the US government are settling today. And today, of course, marks the end of September and the quarter, which typically tends, tends to see spikes in these overnight money market rates. And so definitely you could see this draw a little bit of attention as we go into the afternoon. I think overall, though, from an intraday trading point of view, I don't think the markets will be as spooked as we were, given the fact that, again, I think the, the US Federal Reserve are going to be looking to add copious amounts more of liquidity to facilitate any disruption in the short term. But something to just be aware of, uh, of course. Um, in the oil market, I did mention that oil is a, a touch lower this morning, down uh, only about 14 cents, so relatively flat, trading just below the $56 handle and pivot in the futures market. Uh, but comments out of the Saudi Crown Prince MBS at the weekend, uh, who said that Iran war would bring down the global economy uh, oil to hit unimaginably high numbers if country was to go to war. Uh, I guess the reading between the lines of some of the text from the interview, the main point being is, is that he's generally looking to calm the situation, which of course have been tensions growing uh, following the attack that we saw on those oil installations and, and infrastructure in Saudi Arabia from Iran about two or three weeks ago. Um, the fact that that was threatening to escalate seems to have died down uh, a little bit at the moment. Um, but we'll see how that plays out as we go through the week, of course. And then one headline from this morning uh, I did see come out uh, that we have shared on our Amplify Twitter feed. Uh, but continuation of, of changes kind of in opinion of how the DUP are positioning themselves in UK politics. Uh, having heard that they could be open to some kind of compromise about how the government could deal with the Irish, uh, the Republic and Northern Irish border. However, they seemingly have, have hardened that stance once again. Uh, their leader, Arlene Foster, warning the Tories she is not prepared to see border checks in the Irish Sea. Uh, so this would be another... I'm not sure I understand. This could be another blow to... Uh, Boris Johnson, who's already seen several over the last week, 
uh, on a variety of different fronts. So it certainly puts the pressure on him as he goes into this Tory party conference. Usually this is a bit of a, a kind of a parade, if you like, for the existing government leader. However, this is quite the opposite. He goes into this very much so on the back foot. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Is there anything he's going to say really substantially, though, move the pound in an intraday respect? I would say unlikely. Uh, I would see him continuing down the usual rhetoric. And if anything, I would say that just continues to see um, cable consolidate around these lower levels. Uh, if I start just having a look at the chart briefly to see what the potential range could be as this conference goes on over the next three days or so. Let's just bring out the time frames a little bit. Well, let's go to a daily continuation. I mean, we've backed off already quite, quite considerably three points or so off the initial highs that we're seeing uh, only uh, about 10 days ago. And so I don't really see, I mean, that's quite a decent technical level we're at at the moment already. So some consolidation around here, any break lower, uh, perhaps uh, another push down to around the 122 handle, but I really don't see it doing too much more than that uh, at this moment in time. Any cause of, you know, his resignation are likely to fall on deaf ears. I, I think there was a report in the I can't remember an online news agency talking about the Queen apparently has been looking into is it is it possible to fire Boris Johnson but again I think all of this is just uh, the media having a bit of a fanfare at the moment just because it's, it's a good headlines to make I don't see any real massive changes happening at this point in time all right finally back to the calendar to wrap things up and then I'll hand you over to Sam um, the other major things then to have a look out for are the RBA interest rate decision. I think the consensus still remains for, for rates to be at 1%, but on the balance, obviously, a lot of these Antipodean central banks leaning on the side of interest rate cuts. And so accompanying language will obviously be particularly important if they decide to hold rates. Uh, and then you've got the Chinese holiday throughout this week. Uh, I think it's celebrating the 70 years of the Communist Party. So the overnight trading conditions are likely to be fairly tame, given that they will be out of the market. You've also got the German holiday as well for their unification um, day. That's happening on Tuesday, so that's tomorrow. So as I understand, the, the German markets will be closed. And then, as I said, you've got the uh, non-farm payroll reading will be the, the final kind of highlight to see off the week. Um, you can access this calendar. Sam's going to send it out in the weekly strategy. I also tweeted it for my account. You can see my handle uh, below there uh, on the image on the video screen now. But otherwise, I wish you a good week ahead. Um, Sam and I will be on the briefings as per usual every morning. Uh, any comments or any questions that you have regarding this session or the week ahead, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Um, we will do our best to reply to everyone uh, as and when we can. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Have a good week. <clears throat> Hi guys, hope uh, we're all, all doing well, good weekend. Uh, we'll have a, a quick look over, well, we'll start off with, with stocks, as Ant was, uh, was saying at the beginning, obviously the last trading day of the month and, and quarter, so it'll be interesting to see where, where we finish, well, the quarter uh, itself, the S&P you can see here on the futures, just bringing that into, into uh, the chart now, you can see it's pretty much exactly where it opened. Uh, the, the quarter. So whether we can get a, an up or down one may uh, certainly be uh, pivotal, pivotal going forward. Uh, and I saw a stat earlier uh, about the S and P. Um, uh, the the year before an election, it October returns are for the majority of the time positive. So October proving to be a, a good year, a good month the year before the election, except for 1987 where it was down 20 odd percent. I'm not sure we'll see something like that, but something to look closer to where we are trading now, and just can bring the pivots on to give it a bit of a, a bit more feel. You can see, obviously, we made that attempt at trying to make another high, and since then it has just drifted lower. I would would start to uh, to get a bit of a trend from that as a as a guide, and this might be something you know later on or or never at all. But just as a a point of interest if we can this this week at all get back up to this trend line from the uh, the high that we made on the 19th 
uh, then this would be something uh, I'd like the look of if it was to break through and, and then really from a sentiment gauge as well uh, I'd imagine we are would be starting to, to drift higher however you can see over the last few sessions we have been met with uh, some decent pushes lower certainly following the cash open here you can see this starting on the 20th uh, then the 24th and again cash open on the 26th and then again um, from the 27th so some decent pushes to the downside uh, leaving us at the moment uh, around 50 points off that all-time high uh, so some some strong selling coming in into the uh, the cash open is that all for now well as long as we stay below that trend line fine I'd be bearish but uh, above that I think we could see a, a decent uh, you know attempt again at, at going higher to the downside you can see the low that we made on Friday is going to draw a line up on that and just drag this now above the the camera you can see the importance of it uh, as a good line in the sand the the highs that we had back on the 30th but remember this whole zone that we had that was just so so important uh, around 29.46 we finally finally got back down to there on friday uh, i know certainly once we had broken up and here we're looking at more at the beginning of september uh, it would have been a great opportunity had any of these days come back down to it but the first retest of that level uh, has been met with a, a 30 point bounce so uh, really strong technical level, good line in the sand to the downside if that was to hold. Um, well, it is holding, I guess, and, you know, really good level support. And that trend line to the upside as well would be my kind of lines in the sand for the week going forward. And, of course, just bear in mind, as, as we were saying, it is the uh, quarter end uh, for this product, product or market, I should say, in general. Uh, S&P pretty much flat. The, da the Dow Jones is up. Uh, a bit more whereas the Nasdaq is slightly down the last quarter uh, that we were had down for the Nasdaq was uh, quarter four last year of course where uh, we entered bear market uh, territory but uh, seems a long way away from that now uh, having a look over to the currencies euro um, I was having a look this morning just at the the charts obviously as where Ant was saying we were off last week and just how could uh, an opportunity this was here the the previous low of the the 23rd came back got the pivot and it pretty much hit it to the tick and we've drifted down since then similar to the s p in in that uh, just where the the previous highs have been getting lower I'll probably look to have a, a trend line on that uh, as well just to you see can we well can we get the third test of it at some point but just as a guide going forward uh, as well to to the downside obviously you can see we found a bit of support already this morning and, and just struggling to get through that but more interested in just a bit below there on the futures it coming in at 109.86 give a give or take a, a couple of ticks it's the low that we had back on on thursday good price action then on friday morning and then to the afternoon uh, as a good solid level of support uh, if we were to get below there and I like the idea of us seeing Friday's lows again, which you can see along with Thursday, we just couldn't confirm that breakthrough. Putting it onto that longer term chart, you can see as well, if we were to get down to those levels, uh, it could get quite ugly uh, again. Um, but the euro, as we just traded this morning, has found good support on that low. So keep a, an eye on that and that trend line as well, I would say. A break above that trend, you know, while you have some decent resistance up at the high from Thursday along with the R1 and that previous low as well, I just bear in mind how we would get there. So if it does get that third test and the trend and a strong push higher, you know, it could be the, the cue not to necessarily look to, to go short unless we were to get higher up and, you know, R2, uh, 1.10.50 around this area does look quite promising. The pound as well over the last few sessions has been drifting lower and lower and similar to the euro in that we have, let me just put this onto a 60 minute, a similar situation where we are just coming up uh, to potentially test an area where these trend lines could be. So similar with the euro, just keep an eye what happens around uh, this trend line uh, as well. You could argue the same to the downside. Uh, we're just starting to get squeezed from both directions. A break either way could be uh, relatively interesting. Uh, but the pound is having a, a decent push above the pivot this morning. Uh, next real key area, this trend line, and of course the highest from Friday uh, afternoon around the R1 uh, as well uh, to, to keep an eye on. Putting this on uh, a quarter chart, no surprise to see. Uh, obviously a, a down month, we hit that famous 120 level. To have a decent bounce, and you can see uh, we're just struggling to confirm a push higher above 
you know this what was a key key level of support certainly on the quarter chart anyway you can see uh, we would need a, a very strong push to get us above there uh, which would be incredibly bullish technically uh, but below here uh, it wouldn't be surprising to see some further downside to come and of course the euro you can see here you know trading on, on levels not seen since april 2017 um, uh, as well so the, the dollar pair is under some pressure um, overall on the, the bigger the bigger picture so having a, a look over now intraday over at gold and, and we will of course go over these charts longer term uh, in the strategy that we we send out you can see a decent push lower uh, that we had on on the 25th five days ago uh, and back to, back towards that 1500 and every time uh, at the beginning of the month we were just talking about the importance of it was around 1492 I remember give or take uh, just that level and you can see if I put this above the, the camera just how many times we've come here and found such strong support of course this being the the Fed uh, low from the 18th really strong push higher and we're now coming back to test that whole level the dollar is obviously strong uh, you know overall as well uh, which could lead to a bit more of a a correction lower just putting this on that longer term chart now and you can see the importance of that level so if we were to get a, a confirmed break and close below 1492 might not be much stopping it towards back down to, to 1460 you can see a really strong previous level resistance before the break high at the beginning of august just the whole level here at 1492 very very key where would i be happy uh, to to get long where you can see the Perhaps the importance of the high that we had uh, back on the 24th was also this breakdown area uh, around here. So 14, 15, 43, I should say, uh, pretty key. Uh, are we now into a new range? Uh, but every time we come 1492, met by a good support, uh, just furthers the idea that a break of that could be a decent push to the downside. Uh, oil finally made that gap, filled the gap, didn't it, uh, last week or, well, you can actually see here, on uh, on Friday. Uh, it took a while, of course, after the, the, the big push higher a couple of weekends ago, uh, but we have now uh, filled that. And, uh, well, I mean, that's the that's the key level, really, 55 bucks to, to the downside. You can see the importance uh, once we hit that on Friday, decent push lower. Just putting this now into 60 minute, and you can see really struggling to get uh, above after we broke through uh, the low of the 24th uh, we just struggled to really confirm a, a push higher each time we've come there so almost the opposite of gold a break above that then fine I wouldn't mind a you know a decent push towards 57.37 so basically the the previous highs of of the end of last week really important uh, and of course 55 bucks to the downside those would be the, the key levels that I would be uh, be focusing on more uh, medium term uh, and, and short term really as well uh, we'll go over these longer term uh, in the, the strategy that we send out uh, let's have a look over at European stocks for the last day of the, the quarter as well gapped higher, almost filled the gap to keep an eye on that pivot relatively small range though has to be said uh, so far for for the uh, the DAX and, and worth just having a look here let's see if we can get a bit of a trend line on as well which will come in at the, the same price as the pivot as well so certainly one I'd have marked up there for the DAX and, and European equities uh, as well. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let us know. Strategy report will be out uh, around midday, so even any questions to that as well, please do let us know. Hope you have a good trading day uh, and a great rest of the week.